Hello. Just a, a quick little gadget uh, in this one. Something that could come in useful for some kind of uh, simple animation or possibly a bit of a Halloween gimmick to make something uh, wave or uh, you know, hand move, eye, eyes move, something like that. Very, very simple. I'll stop it now because uh, it's getting noisy. I'm not going to give exact plans because it's more of a, a way of doing something rather than an exact design. The critical parts are a little open solenoid coil. That's one I used in another video and it's extracted from a little automotive relay, 12 watt relay. Just by taking the top edge of the case apart with side cutters and then gradually taking bits away. You've got the far end of the arm, the center pin uh, in the coil where it meets the frame to separate the two, but then you can you can take it all apart and just leave it a coil with no no center. Then there's a line of tiny magnets to make one long thin magnet, little disc magnets. I think the four millimeter outside diameter, and these are one mil inside diameter. I don't know exactly how many is there, but there's a section about twenty five mil or so long, just a bit longer the coil. Um, the other critical part is a hinge. Now in this one, I've just got uh, two bits of brass tubing that slide one inside the other. I'll turn one inside the other. And all the piles of washers are just so when I solder the bits on the ends, it's something to stop the solder just flowing straight in and uh, soldering the centre swivel to the outer tube. You could equally use a small brass hinge or something like that. It just needs something that will swing through very freely through the angle of the pendulum. On the, this one, the wires are made from mild steel welding rod, which is copper plated, makes it very easy to solder, but it is iron or ferrous, so it's magnetic. So the curved bit at the bottom there is made from a bit of stiff copper wire. Now that turned out to be too thick to go through the magnets, which would have made it a lot easier. So it's got a bit of twisted wire that's been tin solid through the magnets and then that's soldered on at each end to the thicker wire that forms the arc. So the critical bit of that overall is that the whole thing swings very, very freely and doesn't catch anything and, and the magnets don't catch in the coil, they just go straight through it. That's a bit fiddly, it can take a bit of a time to set things up so it works like that. Then the bit of packing there is because that coil has different size ends on it so it uh, doesn't sit level on its own. And when I took it apart I left that centre tag in and broke the uh, contact off the inside and that just happened to be very convenient to put a screw through it to hold it down. So it is a 12 watt coil, they're the original coil terminals with uh, just push on terminals on you could solder it as long as you don't melt it. Then the other bit to make it work is a spring switch, which is at the top. That's just a bit of, uh, well, it's, that's a square pad board. Could be strip board or anything. It's just a way of attaching something to the fixed frame so it can have an insulated terminal with a wire on it. Then that, if I can do it without breaking things, that in turn has a bit of springy strip in it connected to, the, to it, again on the fixed part. And then the back of the moving part has a little pin sticking up at the opposite end to the where I've got that springy wire sold on there. And that, it's very difficult to see actually, the camera doesn't want to focus on it. But that just and only just, you've got to adjust it very carefully, snags on the end of the spring as it goes past centre. If I, if, you, if I do that whilst it's, um, well, if you can see the magnets as well, if I get it right. I don't want to focus on anything now, come on. There we go. If you listen to the twang as it releases,
you can see that it releases just after the magnet has got clear of the coil. And what that does between the let me focus again between the wire on that, the blue wire on there, and through that little bit of a spring that allows the whole thing to move. Oh, it's a, co a coil of wire up wire there. Um, it just allows the thing to swing and still get a, a set of reliable electrical contact. Then there's the other wire is soldered on the bottom there, the green one. So between the blue and the green, you've got this momentary spring switch that makes contact as it gets near enough dead centre and then breaks after the magnet has cleared the coil. Then join the, mag the switch and the coil in series, whichever way works, it's trial and error, or just join them in series and try the battery polarity, whichever way works. So you've got two wires joined and two wires free. If I uh, bent it, I think, have I? No? Oh no, no, it's just uh, resting on the switch. If everything's right, then when you connect a battery, and this one, of course, oh, come on, focus. This, of course, is by Murphy's Law. It needs the black one on positive for it to work. And the green one, I'm trying to do it one hand. Again, still trying to get this battery to say contact. Ah, there we go. Right. If it's working right, when you when you touch the battery, the, the, the thing will try and run out of the coil if it's on the con centre contact. Just make sure it's on the contact and centred first and connect the battery and it tries to push out. It doesn't matter which side it is, as long as it's too balanced to one side, connect the battery and it should. Try it, I might have to help it a little bit. No, it's not in the contact. It's trying to push out the coil anyway. So what that means is, as it swings, oh, there it goes. See, it's pushing away from the coil and they connect the battery. As it swings, it gets a push away from the coil just as it gets past to being more or less on centre. So it, whichever way it's going, the the short pulse through the coil whilst that spring of contact's made pushes it further out. Oops. I'm handing away. And as you can see, as long as everything's set up right so it swings freely, it's quite enthusiastic, even though it's only got one and a half volts running a 12 volt supposedly relay coil. It needs very, very little power. And it only draws power for a fraction of a second as it passes the centre each time. In fact, the better, it, the faster it's going, the, or the further the swing is, the shorter time it's drawing power. So it is quite economical. I mean, this idea came from something that my older brother had in the 1960s. It was some, a part of an old shop display of some sort. It worked on the same principle, but it was a commercially made device and it had a, a holder for a D cell battery in it and presumably should run for days or weeks even on that. But the, the functional principle is exactly the same. And this is just a kind of uh, crude recreation. As I say, how it's built exactly doesn't matter as long as they've got the principles with the hinge, the springy contact that makes it centre and breaks a little bit after and a magnet that passes through a coil. Anyway, that's it. It's just a little novelty and I hope it's of interest. And thanks for watching.